So let's go ahead and start doing that using the Rapid Minus Studio client again. For our next process, we are going to use a validation technique uh, by generating a ROC curve to see which of the models fit better. Uh, I'm going to open up this existing workflow that we have. In this workflow, we are basically reusing the 005 combined 2007 process. This is basically the process that combines your data with the weather data for both source and destination. I'm then doing some data preparation activities that we have seen in the previous workflows, basically creating the event flags, I'm converting some data types, and then at the very end, I'm getting rid of rows where there are missing values in any column. Later on, I'm passing this data to the compare ROC operator. It's a very simple operator. I provide the number of folds and the split ratio and what kind of sampling I want to use. If I double click, inside I can start building various models. So what I'm doing here is first building a gradient boosted trees with passing all the columns and a deep learning with all the columns. The third and the fourth model are here the gradient boosted tree with only without the weather data. So I'm just passing in the flights data that we earlier had. The same thing with the deep learning algorithm. And on the right side, on the bottom here, what we're doing is building models only with the origin weather data. So by doing this, I'm basically going to compare these two algorithms, how they perform when they have just the flight data, the weather data for the origin, and then with the weather data for origin and the destination. So to execute this workflow, like before, we are going to hit the play button. Rapid Miner is going to go ahead and process the details, and then the result will be available as a ROC chart. Here is our output for the ROC curve. And we have some clear indications. Uh, the DL, deep learning with both the weather data, obviously seems to be better. The next guess, best one is the gradient boosted tree with weather on both the sides. So definitely having the weather information for both origin and destination seems to be promising. However, to verify this, I'm going to continue building on this workflows and we are going to build some cross validation models to see how it behaves. Going forward, we are going to use existing processes and walk through the setup that was done. So for now, I'm going to open the cross validation workflow here. Similar to before, I'm reusing my previous preparation block. Instead, I'm doing some data preparation. I'm creating the columns for the weather events. I have a few steps here that I have disabled for now. And then I'm selecting only the columns that are from the original flight data set. And also I'm filtering out data set that has any missing values. And then I'm passing it along to a cross validation operator here. Rapid Miner provides various validation techniques. Cross validation obviously is the powerful one. It automatically does tenfold validation, uh, automatically does the sampling you select and divides the data into training and testing part. On the training part, I can add a lot more than one algorithm. So for example, if I had a need to normalize the data before and then I can go ahead and group this data set together or group the models together and combine and create a combined model that can be used for the training and the testing purposes. So the idea here is it provides a versatile framework for you to build models, combine different models and still perform cross validation in a very easy fashion. So for now I'm just going to go back and do a few undos and we will run the workflow here to build the deep learning model. The results of the validation are here. What I see is my model is around 63% accurate. So it's a good enough start. Obviously we have ignored the weather data as well as we can do some things like dummy coding of our variables. So I'm going to proceed to reconfigure those steps that we had initially ignored. These convert the necessary columns into binomial columns using the Micord mechanism. And let's go ahead and rerun the workflow to see what the output of this cross-validation looks like. The results of the cross-validation are here. Uh, this time we are getting the results after the dummy encoding. And I see a three-point bump here, so definitely another good improvement to the model. So now let's rerun this workflow one last time with including the weather data. So to do that, I'm going to go back to my select attributes and ensure that I'm selecting 
to where the data itself and apply keep in mind we are doing an invert so basically it's going to select everything except the events column so let's go ahead and run this workflow one last time to see if we see any improvement by including the weather data which will validate our earlier hypothesis or what we saw from the ROC that the weather data model seemed to be working better the results for our third iteration of cross validation are back and again this time with the weather data I see a bump of another few points and the accuracy is up to 70 percent so looks like we should be using the weather data in our model building process. Also another thing here is, let's say the accuracy would not have improved, I could always go back to the result history and view at the previous iteration. So in this case, you'll notice the first one was 63, then 66, followed by the last one where we got an accuracy of uh, 70. If for some reason, if you wanted to revert back to this workflow, all I have to simply do is click on this button and that will restore the workflow back to what got us to that result set so we can go back iterate and go back uh, and change workflows to find the right result set very quickly so far we have done cross validation where our data set was the 2007 data set obviously for this use case we want to test it against a 2008 data set to see how it performs so to do that we're going to work on a new workflow here the cross compare models what I'm doing here is bringing in data from two different data sets, the 2007 data, 2008 data. I'm simply appending them. Then we are doing the data preparation like we have been doing before, the same stuff. And then again, I am dividing the data into a training piece based on the logic that the year is equal to 2007 and the unmatched data, which is our 2008 data, goes into the new model management operator. I'm simply creating two learners here, deep learning and gradient boosted trees with the 2007 data. And then I'm collecting and passing it to the model management operator. Now to add uh, one more algorithm to this, I'm going to use rapid miners ensemble models. If I search for the word ensembles, you'll notice rapid miner has a rich set of ensemble models available. Uh, random forest gradient boosted trees obviously are very common but we also have various uh, bagging, boosting, voting algorithms available. So for now, today, we're going to use the bagging algorithm. We are going to add in the data set. We are going to pass it along to the collect operator. Inside the bagging operator, I'm going to use a simple decision tree learner, and I'm going to change one parameter for the bagging which is we'll provide 100 iterations so it will actually create 100 decision tree models at this point our bagging model is ready the gradient booster and deep learning tree and we're going to run this workflow for getting which is the best out of these three models when it comes to testing against the 2008 data set also this same operator can be used for comparing models that are already saved in your repository. RapidMiner repository allows you to save workflows, processes, data, as well as models. You can simply drag in an existing model and pass it along to the model management operator. That way you can compare models that are currently built versus the models that are available in your production systems that by doing a competition between the models and if our new models are better than the current models then they'll be replaced otherwise we will continue using the one in the production but for the purpose of this demonstration, we'll go ahead and hit play and see what the results look like. As a surprise, it turns out my bagging model actually has the best performance here with an accuracy of 71% when it comes to testing against the 2008 data set. I'm also going to plot the data set which is captured here. So if I look at the location where all the data is saved, all my models are saved here under this folder. Their individual performances are also available. And I can look at the performance records of the models. So my bagging models accuracy of 71% with a precision of about 63. The next best is gradient boosted tree 66 and 48 and this one in 62 and 44. So it turns out bagging model actually is working out very well for our data set. The bagging model in this case is nothing but a decision tree of 
or rather a collection of 100 decision trees and they're already saved here so that I can later reuse for my future use cases.